Holy God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto your sight, O Lord, my God and my Redeemer. Amen and amen. As you have probably already noticed in your program, the title of this message, if I would have walked into this church and picked up the program and saw the title of the message, I would have made it about face and went out. No left. As you know, the, the title of the message is Potty Talk. Now, don't get nervous. I am not going to potty talk here. And I have, you know, I mean, I, I have preached on many, many topics, some of them controversial, some of them uh, uh, bizarre, perhaps, maybe even sometimes. And those of you who've heard me preach many times, I love using titles and, and to the message because I find that a title of a message helps us remember the message and to keep it with us and to uh, 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 help, help us understand it a little better. Now, you know, um, I have preached about many things before, but I've never preached about toilets until now. Yes, it is potty talk. But I'm only doing this because Jesus did. So I'm only following Jesus. I'm only doing what Jesus do. You ever seen those banners? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? Well, that's all I'm doing, you know. This is Jesus, you know. He spoke this, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just following him, okay? But bear with me and stick with me. I'm not trying to be funny. I want you to understand this more than anything you can understand that I've ever preached. This is probably the most serious message that I've ever preached. Uh, you know, and, and that's hard for me to say something like that because I've been preaching for over 40 years. Um, but I just want you to understand uh, how serious and how important this message is, although it has a title that doesn't seem to uh, lend itself to that. But as I was preparing for this sermon here, I, I looked in the homiletics magazine, and it homiletic magazine that has the same title to a sermon, and they uh, kind of were talking about um, high-tech toilets. Uh, you know, you don't find too many of those in the United States, but in other parts of the world you do. You have toilets with that have heated seats. And on the wall and on the right and the arm and left arm are a series of touch buttons to select a variety of options. But when all is said and done, with all the flashy gadgets and colors, green and blue and high design, it's still a toilet. The Bill and Gloria Gates Foundation is putting money into funding toilet technology in China, in India, also in Africa. Their endeavor is called Reinvent the Toilet Challenge. And so you say, what's the point? Well, Jesus mentions the toilet to make a powerful point. In the New Testament reading that we read, Jesus actually mentions a toilet. And you have to look at this in different translations. You have to look at it in the Greek. And if you want to even go into the Hebrew and find out what is it that Jesus was actually saying, he's talking about a toilet. Now let me just give you a little bit of background to this so that we can understand um, where I'm coming from and why this whole message and why even Jesus would want to even talk about toilets. Well, you would have to go to the first verse that is found in Matthew chapter 15 and we get a little bit of a background of why all of this and what's this all about. Well, what was happening is that some rulers, some Jewish leaders and officials came all the 
way from Jerusalem to Galilee where Jesus was to confront him to confront him about some hygiene issues and so they come to Jesus and they say to him hey you you and your disciples are breaking ceremonial laws. You are breaking the law. And Jesus said, yeah, what is that? What are you talking about? He says, well, we've been observing you guys for some time, and you guys don't wash your hands before you eat. And that is breaking a Jewish law. That is breaking a ceremonial law, and you should know better than that. You are breaking a law. Now, I love the way Jesus answered them about that, you know, that, uh, before he goes into the toilet part, you know, uh, uh, and things. Let me just mention what he kind of like says to them. He says, hey, listen, it's not what uh, uh, goes into the body of a person that defiles them. It's what comes out of that body that defiles them. And then he says to them, whether you wash your hands or you don't wash your hands, it doesn't defile you. Now, I wish I knew that scripture when my moms, when we used to come into the house for dinner, because the first thing my mother would say, get in that bathroom and wash your hands before you come, or you're not going to sit at this table and eat. I wish I knew that passage of scripture, because I would have said to my mother, I said, Mom, the Bible says, Jesus said, whether you wash your hands or you don't wash your hands, it doesn't defile. I got a, an idea what my mother would have said, you know, after she would hit me in the head. My mother would have turned around and said, honor your mother and your father, which is a commandment. And it's also a commandment with a promise. And all will go well with you. Now get in that bathroom and wash your hands. That's exactly the way my mom would have dealt with that because my mom knew the scriptures and you could not get over on her. But then what Jesus says, he makes this analogy which is astonishing when you think about it. He speaks of the toilet and then he uses that as a description of the human heart, of our heart. Now when we speak of our heart, we're speaking about that inner consciousness and sentiment that is part of our nature. But Jesus calls it a toilet. That's what he says, you know. I tried to come around this thing. I, I came this from different angles and, and tried to figure out, said, man, this is insulting. This is a mess. As a matter of fact, once he said this, um, uh, Peter comes up to Jesus and says, you know, you offended a lot of people, and especially these uh, Jewish rulers that came here. You really offended them with what you said. And Jesus said, I don't care. You know, that's what he said. You read it. You read it with me. He says, hey, listen, I ain't worried about those guys. Those are a bunch of blind people. And if you follow the blind, the both of you will fall into the pit. And so Jesus goes and he begins to describe to them. And he goes into it and he describes the toilet of the time and what happens and how that's used. And then he says, the heart is the same way. And then, in that passage of scripture, he ends the passage of scripture by saying, because of our heart is a cesspool that evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, and false witness, slander, are defecated by our actions and it pollutes everything around us. That's hard to deal with. I didn't think I was going to get too many amens here today. I understand that. I'm having a hard time amening some of this. But why am I preaching this to you? Why am I being, why didn't I just skip this passage of scripture over? 
can't. Because here's the message. The message here is that Christ is describing our own hearts to us. And he's saying to us, just like the prophet Jeremiah in the Old Testament scripture we read, he said that the heart is deceitful above all things. And that it's wicked. Wow! That's hard for us to deal with. That's hard for us to even ascend. Accept this, you know. And this is not the first time that Jesus goes on this kind of a... a, 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 a speaking out against the Pharisees. He said to them, Woe unto you Pharisees, because you're hypocrites. You have whitewashed tombs, which on the outside you look beautiful, but on the inside you're full of dead man bones and all kinds of filth. Now that was in Jesus' words. Those are not my words. So don't get mad at me, okay? They say, wow, that preacher there today. I, I wish I wouldn't have gone there today. He just, uh, he's just one of those uh, uh, legalistic guys. He's, he's one of those hard, old-fashioned uh, preachers. I came here to get my self-esteem built. I came here to feel good. And he's not making me feel good too, bad, too much. Well, you know, I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to give you the truth. And the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so what was Jesus doing? He was trying to get to the heart of the matter. He was trying to get down to the nitty gritty. Here are these people coming to him and giving him all these regulations and all these rules. And you know what? It's easy for some people to do regulations and rules on the outside. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, when it comes down to really doing the spirit of the law beyond the letter of the law, that's where a lot of people fail. Remember this story in the New Testament where the young man came to Jesus and said to him, Hey, Jesus, um, I, you know, I want to know, how can I get eternal life? How can I make heaven my home? How can I have everlasting life? And Jesus looks at this young man, and he knows he means business. And so Jesus turns around and says to him, Well... Uh, all right, why don't we just start with the law? Uh, how about the law? How are you doing there? He goes, no problem. I've been keeping the Ten Commandments since I was a kid. I, I follow those commandments to the letter. I made sure of that. And the Bible tells us that Jesus was impressed with this young man. And so now Jesus looks at this young man and says, wow, I'm impressed with, with this kid's answer. But then Jesus turns around and says to him, well, I'll tell you what, if you really want to make heaven your home and you really want eternal life, then I'd like for you to come and hang out with me so you can learn more about this, so you can know more about this, you can know more about me. So what I'd like for you to do is I'd like you to take a lot of the stuff that you have, get rid of that stuff, take it to a flea market. I don't know. Do whatever you want. Sell what you have and come and follow me. And the Bible says that when that young man heard that, he put his head down and walked away. And then Jesus, the Bible says Jesus looked at him. He looked at this young man and loved him. He loved this young man. The young man, he can handle the letter of the law. But he could not handle the spirit of the law. It's like what the prophet Isaiah said of old. He said, hey, these people worship me with their lips. They sing songs with their lips. But their hearts are in McDonald's or in the fellowship hall with whatever we're going to eat over there. Or they're what they're going to do tomorrow or the next day or whatever. So Jesus says himself, the prophet says, these people worship me with their, with their lips, but their hearts, it's not there. It's not there. And so that's what Jesus was getting at. He was getting at that religiosity. He was attacking religion. I often tell people that I'm not a religious person. So then why are you dress like one? <laughs> I don't wear this all the time. I don't even remember the last time I wore it. But it is a uniform. It's a pastor's uniform. It's a minister's uniform. If I went to 
the hospital and the doctor walked in with a sweatshirt that's dirty and sneakers. I don't know. And he's gonna mess with me, he's gonna touch me, and you know, go get you know, go take a bath and come back with with your uniform dressed in white where I can see whether there's any blemishes on that. Even today, lawyers would not walk into a courtroom without a suit and tie. And they'll look for a tie that a judge likes. Or any profession, a police officer. Unless he's undercover and plain clothes. But the majority of police officers have a uniform. Why am I talking about this? Why am I I'm talking about this? Because I'm, maybe I'm trying to justify me wearing this fancy robe here. I, I, I'm, I'm wearing it because the church, uh, uh, my former church, gave me this as a gift. And I hope they're watching this on video so they can see their gift being used. But man, that's the outside. What you're seeing, it's in the outside. You may look at me and say, well, he sounds like a nice guy. He sounds like a real dude and everything else. But you don't know me. You know nothing about me. I'll tell you one person knows me. First my wife, then God, you know. Ask my wife about me, she'll tell you who I am. They know. But the thing is this, is what Jesus is getting at is this, is that we can put on the religious act. But it's not a religious act that God is looking at. It's not that we go to church. It's not that we pay our offerings and tithes. It's not, he's not looking at, he's looking at our intentions. He's looking at what is our heart saying. He's looking at our hearts. He never looks at the outside. He looks at the heart. Aren't you glad about that? That's why he says, don't judge. And we are not to judge anybody. We can't judge people. And we do. We do it every day. We're judging people by what we see, by what they look like. Have you judged somebody and then all of a sudden met that person and found out how sweet and how beautiful and how loving that person is and you feel like you know what, you know? For thinking that way when you didn't even really know this person. Um, you're lucky, my time is up. But I'm going to wrap this thing up for you, okay? So how do we get rid of the stink? Because basically what Jesus is saying is that we stink. That's what he's saying. I'm sorry. I, you, know, it, it's, you know, when I thought about this message, you know, and Steve told me that some of his friends and families are going to be here, I, I, I thought of changing the message. But we all stink. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't say that I do. We all think. I think. Before God. And so what do we do about this thing? What do we do? How do we get rid of this thing? <laughs> Smells better up here now. <laughs> Refreshness are not going to do it. You can have all the fancy colors on that toilet seat. It's still a toilet. The only thing that can really, really help us is the fact that Jesus has installed a new system. And the new system that Jesus has installed is that he said he will give us a new heart. That's the beauty of it. When Christ comes and dwells into our lives, he gives us a new heart. He gives us a new life. He changes us. He transforms us. He does this radical thing in our lives and, 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 and it becomes effective. Our life becomes effective. The result is authentic, pure, sweet-smelling, wholesome, and it's benefit to everyone. The Bible calls this having a new heart, and that's what God is offering to us. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says that you are a new creation in Christ. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 
And then I love this passage of scripture that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 and 16. You can look this up uh, later. It says, in Christ, in Christ, God leads us from place to place in victory. Through us, he brings the knowledge of Christ. Everywhere we go, people breathe in the exquisite fragrance. Because of Christ, we give off a sweet scent rising to God's nostril. That's pretty sweet, isn't it? That's what Christ offers. Not religion. Religion, I'm going to tell you right now, stinks. I didn't make that up. I didn't think of that. That's in the Bible. The Bible says that our righteousness, that means our trying to do the right things and look good and all that, it calls it filthy rags. Um, I have not found filthy rags that don't smell. Our righteousness is filthy rags. So here's what the Lord is offering us. He's saying, hey, listen, forget your righteousness. That stinks. Take on my righteousness. And so that's what happens to us is we take on the righteousness of Christ. And his righteousness smells good. It's sweet smelling. It's sweet smelling to God, to everyone around us. So what is this message all about? Don't be religious. Have a relationship with God. Have a personal relationship with God. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Love the Lord with a passion. Go after God. Don't become religious. Religious people are dangerous. They flew airplanes into the World Trade Center. They put Jesus on the cross. Religious people. Don't be religious. Have a relationship with God. Have a personal relationship with Him. Serve Him. Live for Him. We're not perfect. And we'll never be perfect. Not on this planet. No way. But our perfection comes through Christ. Him living in our hearts and in our lives. Amen? Thank you. Bow your heads with me, please.